Hi, I'm Kylie Bronoff, and I'm an actress based in New York City. History is never done. In 2014, I was cast in a job uh, for a video game. I had no idea what that would mean or where it would take me, but I ended up being cast as one of the members of the Vanderlyn gang in Red Dead Redemption 2. And that is what introduced me to uh, the gaming space and to the gaming community. When I was cast uh, in Red Dead Redemption 2, I didn't know what it was. I didn't know that it was in that world. I didn't know it was a Western. I was literally told to wear comfortable undergarments and then just show up at the pickup spot where I would be driven to set. So I didn't even know I was doing performance capture. I didn't know I'd be wearing a motion capture suit. It was completely different from other acting jobs in that I was given no backstory. I didn't know where this character would end up, right? There's a very heavy NDA, so Rockstar's not releasing any of that. Everything about this character, I learn in the moment, in each scene. And so, it's like an actor's dream. First of all, there are cameras 360, there's one right on your face, but everything is play pretend. So it's kind of like the best of all acting. It's like being in a black box theater and doing some of the best film work of your life. And by the way, uh, my cast are some of the finest actors I've ever worked with in any genre or medium. So uh, it was the experience of a lifetime. These girls, Mr. Morgan, they're driving me to despair. Why? No gratitude and no manners. Susan is a badass bitch with a shotgun. She doesn't have to be likable. She gets to be cranky and she gets to be emotional and she gets to be short-tempered and she gets to be loving and she gets to be maternal and she gets to be flirtatious. She gets to be all those things. I think what's incredible and what Rockstar did that I am so freaking proud of is that all of the women in the Vanderlyn gang contribute to missions, uh, whether it's a bank robbery, uh, whatever they do, they are, they are invaluable. They are not put off to the side. They are not hypersexualized. It feels to me like the female characters grew into be something so much more that it feels almost revelatory. Large drip coffee with steamed soy on the side. She nailed it. Uh, say hi, Daniel. Hey. This is my favorite coffee shop. It's called Birch. I come here um, usually two times a day. I can't tell you how freeing it was to be out there playing a character where, you know, whatever she wears, she's gonna wear. Uh, however many wrinkles she has, she's gonna have. I didn't even know how old Susan was. I didn't know what she was gonna look like. So you're not worried about like the camera angle or how it's catching you. You can really just get out there and play. A lot of my female cast members and I felt that freedom in a way we had never felt it before, um, to just go out there and act. And I think a lot of male actors don't understand how much um, how constricting that can be um, for women. My perspective on women in gaming is really growing rapidly because I do host a podcast for the gamers called the Let's Play Podcast. And in that um, position, I have gotten to speak with streamers and developers. Like so many other burgeoning industries, the balance needs to shift. Women need to be welcomed with open arms into every aspect of this. And I'm talking about starting from players, people who spend their money to get a game and play it should be able to do so without fear of retribution or harassment because of their gender. You see it on television. There are more, uh, more people are being represented on television the more television expands and the more voices that are included in storytelling, uh, the more the landscape changes. People who you wouldn't have seen on television in the 80s and 90s. Um, and I think video games are moving that direction too. It seems really exciting to me.